need it in like Texas, right? No, you just have it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you just, I mean, you technically in some places, but they not tripping. What got you into like weapons? I've been I've been on them since I was um in middle school. I got expelled from middle school for um, having a blick. Really? Yeah. So um, I bought it because I was making money. So my partner was like, "Shit." He was from another side of town, and he had two on him. And I was like, "Let me buy one." He let me buy one. And then I got caught with it a few days later because, you know, I'm in school got now doing the most. And, um, oh, you were showing it off type of shit. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, somebody talk about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're not supposed to talk about it. But, you know, I'm young. Mm -hmm. Young, doing something lame. And um, I was 13, and then I got caught with it, got expelled. So I was like, but my, I used to, like, taking them apart, putting them back together and all that type of stuff. Yeah, you... you I'm pretty, maybe maybe you've done this before. You, you know Black Rambo, right? Yeah, for sure. That's my boy. You've done stuff with him, right? I ain't did nothing with him, but we we chop it up. He good. He good people. Yeah, like uh, it, it, it. You let me tell you this. So my um journey with like even weapons was at first I was like, yo, nah. You see, when you don't got it, you don't want nobody to have it. That's just how it goes. Yeah. And then you realize that no niggas gonna have it. Yeah. For then sure. you're like, hold on. I need to exercise my legal rights to have him too. Yeah, for sure, hundred percent. And and, and when, I, when I watch you online, whether you tweet and, and you tweet out some crazy shit that you either got built or like you'll have some crazy colorways, and I'm like, yo, my man be like, he be exercising Second Amendment right. I like it. Yeah, 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 for sure. And then I get, I like to get, I call them exotics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I go get the exotic stuff with all the attachments, so your aim can just automatically be on point. We ain't got to do the most. You know, it's so funny because I think in rap, and, and, and this is the ignorance I came into it with, right? Um, like, now I love guns. But I came into, like, even just as growing up as a, a kid turned to a, a young man, the, it, rappers talked about guns like it was just something you shouldn't have. Or if you had it, it meant like you were super gangster. So to the point, I was like, like you never see a rapper really be like, hey, this is my personal gun collection. Oh, yeah. That's just, I just grew up where they was just around everywhere. Because, you know, it's so crazy. They call it dough lock, and they'll come back with 50 of them when I was young. 50, they'll come back because they done took so many. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And they just, it's just what it is. Yeah, uh, unfortunately in rap, like, listen, you, you could, you could, you know, rap is a form of expression, but I think a lot of people just emphasize, I thought guns were just always illegal everywhere. I live up north. And so they, if you're from the country, though, like in the country in the yeah. south, whether you black, white, whatever, they believe in them. Mm. They in the country, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, that's one thing I've realized. They shooting at beer cans. The yeah. country folks got aim. <laughs> that's what yeah. they do their whole life. They take a shotgun or they go hunting. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. Anyway, uh, welcome to the, another episode of Off the Record Podcast, man. I've been I'm here with someone who I've been trying to lock in with for a while. I would like to uh, describe him as somebody who is a entertainer, but an intellectual in the same breath. Someone who not only is going to make you turn up, but he's also going to turn up your in, uh, uh, intellectual ability by giving you some game. You know what I mean? Everybody w who listens to you, I've heard people say they learn about. Finances from you They learn about A little bit of law from you They learn about Hustling from you They learn about Really getting their life On track And I think that's What sets this man Apart from most rappers If you don't know Who I'm describing At this point I'm here with My guy The one and only Money man Yes sir We in here man That's a very fitting name Yeah I know it's And it's simple too And you gonna remember it So Hey You, you, you know From time to time I pop into your Instagram live and I don't know if you're meaning to do this, but you always, you're always giving game. Like, I've never gone to your shit and like, yo, you're talking shit about somebody or like, you're just like doing whatever. It's it's always seemingly beneficial and you're pushing people to go get more, take advantage of opportunities, be educated. Yeah, I like to elevate people around me or just elevate people, period. Whoever want to be elevated, like, you know, I be trying to, Push positivity, you feel me? Where did that come from? I don't know. It's just in me. It, it, I've been like that since I was a child. Like, just push. I'm always, I lead by example, though. Like, um, I'm always trying to elevate myself mm -hmm. and get better mental, physically. You know what I'm saying? 
So you mentioned earlier, um, you said 13, you got caught with a gun in school. I'm wondering uh, where does that, it, it seemed like, where does that knowledge base come from where it feels like you're a little bit more seasoned in figuring out shit and you, you pass that knowledge on? Like, at what point did, did you start, you know, kind of just using your brain to be like, yo, let me figure out how this shit work and I can take advantage or whatever? Oh, that's all I do, man. I just find glitches and stuff or I find um, workarounds. Because, you know, I'm, I'm one of them type of people when people say you can't do it, it make me want to do it more. Like, oh, so I can't do this? <laughs> and I'm going to find a workaround and figure it out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm just one of them people. I'm thinking all day. I used to smoke cigarettes till I, my vision was going out because I was thinking my mind was racing so hard trying to get some money or something like that. I, I seen that uh, you had made a tweet and you know, well, first of all, you're one of the the first rappers who I saw hop on and kind of like promote the crypto wave. Yeah, I was on crypto. I was on crypto like eight years ago when you had to meet somebody in the park, and then they uh would you had to pay them cash. Then they would get on their laptop and send it to your wallet. It, this was when it was really encrypted. Matter of fact, um, only folks on the dark web was using. Oh shit! Crypto, yeah, because I was doing some other shit. Yeah, 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 and I was, um, I needed. I was like, damn, what the hell is Bitcoin? And the vendor online was like, this is the only way you could pay me. And really? so I had to go get me. So I had to go look on a um a forum online, and I had to find somebody, a white boy. And he linked up with me and gave me some crypto. I had to give him cash though. Crypto was like. It, you know what's so funny? My experience with crypto, I can't remember what year it is. I got to think it's like maybe like 2011, maybe 2012. There was a guy, which by the way, I hope he's a millionaire now, but um, he, he used to be like a huge trick for like these Asian chicks. He, he was my boss back yeah. in my computer lab and I went to Rutgers University. And I remember like th at that time, like he had a machine set up that was mining crypto. And I remember he was telling me like, this is the future. This shit was like mad cheap at that point. Like, it, like I want to say almost less than 30 bucks. And, and and I'm looking at that and I remember him saying this and I was like, yo, yo, this nigga really got nothing to do. Like, yeah, yeah, we, yeah. Yo, yeah. We literally looked at him like, this, this is a fucking loser. And <laughs> really, he had foresight, right? I, will, I hope he had foresight if he kept it. But how did you kind of know that maybe crypto was going to be so important? I didn't um, know. I, th I was just using it to buy bullshit. Like, you know, the shit yeah. that you crypto was for. Back then, it was sites that would sell you anything you wanted. I'm talking about anything. And um, I was using it for that. But then when it started getting to the legit side, I just moved over with it. I was like, oh, damn. I had an old laptop. It's still an old laptop I had that I threw away because, you know, I, I, it was a hot laptop. And I didn't, it was so much crypto on there, I never got to recover it. I threw it in a dumpster somewhere. You know oh, shit. So it probably got some. Probably got millions on it. Multi millions. I don't know what happened to it. You know what I'm saying? I throw it away. I ain't want nothing to do hey, with it. Hey, interestingly enough, I think a lot of people don't realize there's so much, like, as crypto kind of, like, you know, it, it boomed up, to at least Bitcoin. Bitcoin went to, I think, maybe peak at 60 grand or something 60 like that. 60 some, 65. For the people who really got it early, and there's some people who their stories about just losing mad crypto, just off, like, you know, forgetting the key or code or whatever the case is, that's millions of dollars being lost. Everywhere. Like, you just yeah. threw, you threw millions of dollars in a dumpster. Yeah, for sure. But I I can't lose what I never had. Cause, well, I did have it. Shit. You know what, though? But I was using it for some bullshit. Yeah, I feel you. And then I done made some some more money off of it. I ain't really tripping. So you don't strike me as a person who uh, just, at least coming up, was the guy who's like, yo, listen, man. Man, I'm broke. I don't got no money, but I don't know how to get no money. Oh, I, always, I knew how to get money. I came in a rap game. With money, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I never need it. I didn't even need the sign, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I'm good. Mm. Like, I was good coming in. I came in a rap game. I spent 250 off the rip for promo. I seen that. Yeah, that wasn't nothing. Why, know what get, in, why get in the rap game? And also, I, I read this thing that said you were on cash money and you bought yourself out of contract. Yeah, I only signed because my lawyer told me to sign. I didn't even have to sign. I, I was listening to the advice of a lawyer, you know what I'm saying? And, but I rock with Stunner though Stunner and Slim Real solid niggas It's just I didn't have to sign it though You know what I'm saying Tell me that story And I was only signed for six months mm, oh, so, so just break that story down Because uh, Again 
without all of this other, like, you know, uh, I want to call it almost expertise and, like, I think savviness that you have, like, you could fucking rap. You know what I mean? It's, it's not like some shit that you're, like, just winging it. Like, like I think everybody who listens to your music be like, yo, this motherfucker can flow. This motherfucker know how to rhyme. How did you, how did you even get into music like that and then and then explain the cash money situation oh i always could rap i could rap since i was eight years old i knew i could rap i knew i could rap anytime i felt like, mm -hmm. like okay i can go ahead and do whatever it's just i needed the money to um to um put myself out and market myself the way i wanted to so i was getting money it's just i wanted to get enough to rap so i if i had 30,000, 40,000, that's not enough. You get what I'm saying? So yeah. once I caught on to this glitch and I made three, 400,000, I was able to spend 250 real quick. I can go buy all the jewelry I wanted, all that type shit. Then boom, I started getting booked. Mississippi booked me, Memphis booked me, Arkansas booked me. I was doing shows. I was doing four shows a week like it was water. You get what I'm saying? I'm talking about bringing in all this kind of money. Independently. Four shows a week, every week. I lived on the road. No radio play, no nothing. I just had 10 songs all popping, doing millions of plays on YouTube. Doing, sh I didn't even know what streams was at first. So I didn't even put them on DSPs like Apple, Spotify. You only could get my shit on Spinrella. Boom, Spinrella. Ooh, Spinrella. Yeah, I'm just putting it out. And you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And Spinrella, all the country towns listening on Spinrella. So my shit just circulating through there and I'm going to do shows. Then I transferred it over to DSPs and companies. My face was so good. I was streaming so much. Big companies will come in. My boy Alex, uh, shout out to him. He'll come give me 500000 and I pay him back 700000 Or he'll come give me 700000 I pay him back 900000 like it wasn't nothing. You know what I'm saying? Damn. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, so, so shit kind of popped off really quickly for you. So so how did you kind of run into the uh, the cash money situation? My lawyer hit me and was like, I know some people, which was a, you know how it's a furnishing label in the middle. Mm -hmm. And it was actually through a furnishing label to go to cash money. So I met with them and they was cool with Stunner and Slim. Stunner and Slim rocked with me. I came to the studio, Hit Factory down in Miami. We linked what up. What year is this? Yeah, this was, man, it had to be 2017, 18. Mm -hmm. Okay. 20, maybe 2018 because I was moving around and Stunner we did a deal nothing ever came into fruition because I wasn't trying to get under Republic system why not that's too it's too much for me it's too much to keep keep up with I like to keep up with my money so once it go to Republic it's a lot of accounting so when you gotta put in have a lawyer to put in a notice for them to send you your accounting oh yeah, yeah that's, that's right. a problem that's a whole process. But how did you how did you know it was gonna be that way if you never you never signed to a label that big? Yeah. I started reading contracts. Mm. Even though contracts are hard to understand. Yeah, yeah. Fifty pages? Yeah. There's no way a nigga can then addendums and also Yeah, like, <laughs> like when you gotta have another nigga interpret a contract for you and yeah. it's English, <laughs> you don't need to sign that. Yeah. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Yeah. If if somebody really fuck with you, they're gonna break that down and bust it down the way you can understand it. You mm. know what I'm saying? But they, they interpret it for you like it's another language. Yeah, no, of course. And then the lawyer can get over on you. Shout out to my lawyer. I got a lawyer who's good, man. But um, at that time, that lawyer, he was cool, too. It's just shit. He doing music business. I, I look at it as music business. but And music business is bullshit. A lot of it. Not all. Um, Empire do some good business. But um, they gave me a contract. And, but shout out to Stunner Because Stunner let me right out I called him I was like Hey Stunner um, I'm really trying to go back independent I ain't really feeling going to a major But I rock with you and Slim though So, so hold on So when you signed Did you get an advance or anything? Yeah they gave me an advance oh, okay, okay. They gave me an advance But um, I didn't need that advance I used to just walk around with Four, five hundred thousand on me Because I did so many shows So I would have four, five hundred racks At all times on me You know what I'm saying? Like So so, so the advance is that don't make no sense. No. Nothing. I just heard Drake, Wayne, and Nicki. So I'm like, oh, I can get a feature with Drake, Wayne, and Nicki. I'm out of here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And um, I used to go to the hit factory, Wayne right there. You know what I'm saying? It ain't nothing to go get that feature or nothing like that. But, um, you know, I would just, I'd be up there so deep. I got 30 niggas with me. We recording. We high. We got them on drink. You know what I'm saying? Stunner coming through. If you notice, I got a bunch of songs with Stunner because he'll hop on some songs. We'll shoot the video. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But this was only in a six-month period. Life is fast, you know what I'm saying? So I didn't even have time. I'm hopping in my own ecosystem, so I, I don't even have time to be like, what's up with a Drake feature? What's up with a Nicki feature? You know what I'm saying? I wasn't really tripping, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah, yeah. it was it's live. But um, I sat and thought about it. I'm like, damn. 
I don't really need Republic to get involved in my dealings. Um, so and shout out to Republic. I don't know what they got going on because I never dealt with them. Yeah, but I was like, that's, for reference for anybody who's watching, Republic is the house. And the label house to some of the biggest artists in the world, from Post Malone to um, um, The Weeknd, Drake, Nicki. Um, I feel like everybody over there. Is Post Malone over there? Uh, it might be. But everybody else is over there. All the biggest artists are over there, which yeah. means you walk into that system, they're, they're going to handle you in the most corporate way possible. There you go. And I didn't feel like dealing with that. When you got to call somebody to call somebody, yeah, you yeah, don't yeah. deal with the CEO. So, and then every label was showing interest. Like I flew out, talked to Interscope. They was cool. I talked to Sony. They was cool. Um, probably like 98% of labels hit me up. And um, I met Stunner. I was like, okay, Stunner, real nigga. I just chopped it up with him. And, um, but Throughout the time, I was recording at Hit Factory here and there. But we never did nothing major. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it, it never went to where they was going to put a full scale. They were ready to. They were ready to put a full scale promotions plan and everything. But I called hard on it. Because I was like, okay, you know how major labels work. They put up a million. You damn near got to pay back eight, nine. So I was like, nah, I don't like that. <laughs> Yo, ain't that a finesse, man? It's a super finesse. It's the highest loan you can get in history. They this give you a million, a you gotta pay. Most artists, I would say, probably gotta pay back about if they give you a million, you probably gotta pay about eight, nine back. Somebody's gonna sit sit there and be like, nah, how? At least five, six. Look, I don't, yeah. I'm with you. I'm with you. <laughs> yeah. I, because I think people might think a million is just a million. Nah, man. Like, like it's 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 even the way it's recouped is different. The things that you thought were non recoupable is gonna be recouped off as well. You know what I mean? Like things that really is gonna help you and the label. They still taking out of your pocket. Crazy. Hey, we promoting the project, but we're charging you for the promotion of the project. Even though you, us promoting the project is going to benefit us because we're also taking some of the profits. It's kind of crazy. They bleed you dry. Say like literally bleeding you dry and then give you an advance. And then, but you, that's why a lot of artists probably got to make their money out touring. They got to tour a lot. Well, a lot of artists never seen a royalty statement. A lot of artists talk in advance. Uh, they talk in, in advances and, and maybe if they get pub checks, that, that's sizable. For sure. But, but the majority of what they really care about is show money. A hundred percent. That's why a lot of, uh, that's why I think, you know, and we were talking right before the interview about why the state of the music is what it is. If, You've never seen a royalty check from the music you're making, right? Yeah. If you've never seen a royalty check from the music you're making, you might just think, yo, let me just put out whatever to get popping, to go on the road, or to go do other shit. Because you're thinking about, that's that's how you'll make your money. Yeah, and a lot of artists just don't understand the business. You want to understand the business that you're in. It's like selling dope. You understand. You know what you're going to get. You put your eyes on the weed, or you put your eyes on whatever you're buying, and you... You understand it, what you sell it. You get what I'm saying? That's why a lot of people like you because you break it down on some real nigga shit. Like you, you break down very complicated. Which, by the way, the music industry is very complicated. Like, like you, shit. You know, and I tell people make it simple for me. Yeah. I was just telling um somebody the other day. I was like, man, I ain't got time for all this extra shit around it. Make that shit simple. Well, I understand it. Because I make people make it simple for me so I can make it simple for everybody else. Mm. If it's complicated, I feel like you're trying to finesse. Because yeah, why yeah. is it so complicated? Hit you with all the terms and the... Yeah, you know all I mean? this extra shit yeah, going on. Yeah, they, like, what are we doing here? By the time you start doing the question, it'll be like, well, we told you about this. You just didn't know what it meant. Like Man, that should it, be it whispering actually, shit. Like, it'll be under there and light writing and... You know what I'm saying? So, so I'm guessing, like, a major label deal never was that appealing to you because of all the complexity. Once I got money, yeah. it wasn't that appealing. Because I was like, I'm going to live like this anyway. And I could just, I, I'm blessed to be, I'm gifted to do music. It ain't like I'm, I tried to make myself do music. I'm gifted to do music. That's just what I was born with. Some people born with some talent. But um, not saying I'm better than nobody else, but I was born with talent in a way with words. So once I started making money, it was one point I was like, man, fuck rap. Because where I'm from, it, it will, because since we didn't make it, it'll be like, fuck a rapper. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, um, we grew up watching, like, Gucci, Future, all of them. And, you know, they on some street shit still with they rap shit. Yeah. So we was on the same thing. 
um, not fuck them, but we was just like fuck a rapper. That was just our mentality. Yeah, like, fuck trying to be a rapper. Like, yeah, because we, we trapping. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then once um the money came, it was cool. You know what I'm saying? Like I can go rap now comfortably, and I could spend this money on it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No. But I was popping for a long time just under the radar. Like I was just popping. So so, and I guess you know I'm trying to get into your mindset with it. So if you, you got a couple hundred thousand. Look like you're doing good. Why even sign? Period. Even though you know you, you did go to Empire, and Empire, which obviously is just a different like yes, yeah, a Empire, different beast. Yeah, Empire to to uh, Interscope is like at, at least you, you could probably pick up the phone and call Gazi, right? Like 100%. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, like, you're not, yeah. like whoever who runs Interscope do not want to talk to you. <laughs> no, 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 yeah, Interscope I mean, I mean, got I'm, a whole. Well, Chain of command, no, you gotta go. I should my republic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't even know. I think do not want to talk to you. You know what I mean? Yeah, don't want to talk to nobody. You know what I mean? Exactly. Drake got to be the person to get that person. So, what made you sign that situation? And then you also get an uptick with the mainstream because you also do that song Twenty Four with Baby. All right, so I signed because my lawyer convinced me. Mm. I'm going off. You know, they say consult what has been. So I'm like, shit, your lawyer. He know what he's talking about. Um. Then um, when I did it, I called Stunner. I was like, Stunner, man, I'm really trying to go back independent. And he let me go back independent. He was like, all right, enough, just give me back um, whatever. He told me to work out the details with the furnishing company anyway. So we worked that out, and then I just paid him. That was cool of him. Yeah, he could, man, he's solid. Nah, nah I, fuck with, I fuck with baby. Yeah, Stunner, solid, man. He one of the solidest people in the metal music game I done met. You, you, know, you know what's so funny? Before I met him, Right and, and and saw things a little bit closer. Like I, there was a lot of, there used to be a lot of like people. There was a lot of rumors about him that would make you think that he's a nigga that would try to fuck a nigga over. Nah, I ain't never seen that. Well, I'm, I agree. Yeah, but that was that was some of the narratives that came out in like you know music to kind of make it seem like. It was, it was, I think it's unfortunate because all my dealings with him were anytime you know ever since I've known him, he's been a solid dude. Yeah, he's agrees. solid. He moved right. You know what I'm saying? When you see yeah. him, he moving like a boss. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you don't you don't hear him saying much out here. When he yeah. speak, he speak whatever he got to say, and then he back to whatever he doing. Yeah. So he says, you'll sort that out. you sort it out. I'm guessing you'll send 250K. You got, two, you got 250 cash to send? That shit, I had it on me when oh, I was talking shit. to him. <laughs> I, was, I was counting up money when I was on the phone with him, just because I used to have cash all the time. I was just, I just had it on me, like yeah. I kept, I told you four five hundred everywhere I went to. Like cash, guaranteed. I did so many shows and they pay in cash that it'll just pile up. I'll be on the road for a month at a time, four shows a week. Just, it's just piling up. You never put it in the bank. Nah, cause it was you know, and then it was just it was just on me, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So okay, so so you send that money over. Now you're a free agent. Yeah, for sure. What happens after that? I just kept got back the right right back to it, and then Gazi um hit me up because I had did a song. I was like independent, like Gazi, just something to something in the CPN robbery, and he carried that, and then he hit me up. So people was telling me about Gazi anyway. They was like, if you want to, you know, do a partnership. Go holla at Gazi. And Gazi pulled up to the crib and um he you know Gazi will push up on you. You know what I'm saying? He like to get in the field. So he he wanna know what's going on and see for himself. And um he came over and we chopped it up and then we did a partnership over there at Empire. And then that's when I put out Paranoia. Paranoia Gold now, the whole album, and then he helped with the promotion behind that and shit like that. But I before then, right after I signed a stunner, that's when I went and got uh, 500 grand for my boy Boom You know I use other people's money I use mine too though I don't mind I know how to flip But um, He did a deal with her He'll go 500 Give me back 7 Boom So, so, so you went to your homie you, you got 500 from him Yeah it was, a, it was a, He actually had a um, A company where they'll Give you money Based yeah. on your catalog Oh okay 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 Yeah and you got Three years to pay it back I gave it back to him in three months Huh here you go really? He gave me 500 um, I gave him back seven. I ain't even had to. How use you flipping money. money like this? Come on, you, you got to give the secret out. I was just winning. Like my music was music going Music's crazy. Going up. Uh, is are you paying him back off? Is it show money or just whatever? Everything was coming everything, in total. Everything, okay, I'm getting show money. I'm getting streaming money. I'm streaming a hundred k a month at the time. Damn. Like it's nothing. You know what I'm saying? And boom, then uh, he'll give me seven. I gave him back nine. You know what I'm saying? Um, it wasn't nothing. That shit wasn't nothing. 
Damn. Okay. So uh, you, you you dropped paranoia. Yeah, paranoia went crazy. That went crazy. And then what happened next? That really blew shit out of water. Oh, 24. I dropped epidemic. Epidemic went up. 24 started going crazy. This was before baby was on it. It was going crazy. It was um that was going crazy. I had a song called Another Lifetime going crazy, courtesy going crazy. Then um uh, Gazi hit up Lil Baby. Lil Baby heard it and he hopped right on it. You know what I'm saying? Gazi made it happen? Yeah, got I know Lil Baby, but Gazi, he'll go just do it. You know I mean, what I'm he saying? Feel with it, for real, for real. Yeah, he he just hit him up like I think baby will sound good on this song. And take it to the next level. Boom. You know what I'm saying? That's I just true. drop records. I don't I don't wait for nobody. Because I be like, I don't feel like dealing with clearances. You know what I'm saying? Um, and all that type of shit. But guys he'll 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 goddamn he'll deal with all that. So so it looks like you almost view music almost like that's the, that's your new trap, right? Like like you 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 view dropping music and making music like that's your trap house and that's what that's your product you kind of putting out there, right? Yeah, for sure, hundred percent. Damn. So baby gets on the song now. This shit is going crazy now. Yeah, the, when baby got on there, that was cherry on top. What's what, what's happening at least? As you still do shows and you go in different places, the price is going up, right? Like it's going crazy. Price is going up, but I wasn't even doing shows. It was it was pre pandemic. Um, I was oh. growing. I was, I went to Hawaii and I had to grow out there because I was experimenting on growing some weed. Because I was like, damn, Hawaii got some good soil. I wonder what weed will taste like yeah, in that soil. Did, like who the hell? How the hell do you even get into that? You, you yo, you're already lit in the music lane. Who says I got to go out of Hawaii and go check on the soil? You know what? To I had some weed. That's what I'm saying. I had did a makeshift grow in my closet right before. Before I took off in music, I had grew some uh, bubble in my closet, and that shit came out A1. I fucked up the first batch, then the second batch came out A1. So then um, I always had a passion for growing weed, you know what I'm saying? Because, I, I, you know, I was used to be trapping. So I'm like, yeah. shit, I need to become the, the grower in this shit. That's what's making the money. If you can do grower and, and the middleman, you all profit. You're going to get rich. But music happened to take off, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, fuck that shit, music taking off. Somebody just paid me my first show with 4500 I'm like, damn, 4500 real quick just to come see me, goddamn. Spit some words on stage. Went crazy from there. But at that point, I, w I was bringing my own strain out, so I wanted to market it as this shit grew in Hawaii on some real organic yeah. soil, you know what I'm saying? And I made, I went to San Francisco after that because, you know, I'm fucking with the dispensaries out there, putting some deals together, and I made 24 Courtesy um, And I was like This shit out of here These gone I knew they was gone When I was making them So 24 really? immediately went Yeah I just dropped it I dropped it with no promo You know what I'm saying Like just dropping them And they just organically went The shit you was even saying On the song though Was just like Immaculate you, Yeah they don't People still don't know What I'm talking about To this day <laughs> I mean I'm still trying to decipher it Yeah like, I, That's how all my shit is Hey I'm, I'm you the type of nigga look like man. We drop you off in sub saharan Africa, man. You gonna you, you, you gonna have some type of mansion and and oh, and, I'm gonna adapt and a I whole adapt. goddamn yeah. village out there. Man. <laughs> yeah, I adapt in any environment, everywhere I go. Where, where does that come from? I don't know, man. You, I think you gotta be born with it. You just gotta be born with it. Could you could you work to become a great? Because I I think I don't like just saying hustler for you. Because I just think it's much more than that because it's, it's very intellectual above the neck shit going on too, which a lot of times I think people don't use their brain a lot. People just go do shit. You know what I mean? Do you think someone could work at that type of shit or you really just think it's God gifted type of thing? You might, you might can work at it. I just was born with it. My head always going with new ideas and then I look at shit and figure it out. Like I, I'm the type of person, I just look at something and be like, okay, like people be um, Like with a record deal If an artist is fucked up With their label I probably can come in And negotiate Like hey Can you let him out He'll give you this You give him that And it and it's plausible And they'll let that artist out You mm. get what I'm saying Yeah because, because of how I think Other people just shut down And just fuck everybody But I look at stuff And figure stuff out Hey I, I seen you tweet Something recently I, I, I don't know uh, If you have a relationship With him or or if you know, well, you probably know about them. So you had tweeted that you pretty much got offered forty million for, for your for your catalog. Your Charleston yeah. White was like, man, that nigga's lying like hell. Charleston White is crazy because he said 
Nobody know me. I fuck with y'all the white because yeah. he'll say some real shit that, amongst all the. <laughs> yeah, he funny. As hell. I look at him like a true comedian, man. But he was like his catalog worth twenty twenty five, <laughs> and then um he was like uh he chitless circuit man. But before that, he said, "Do you know why country music artists so rich? Because they stay in the chitless circuit." Mm. Then he called me the chitless circuit man. Charles White just crazy. So if you listen to what he's saying So he, he contradicted what he said Because he was saying that He don't think your music is worth that much Because you do the chilling circuit But he also said And gave credit to country music artists For really killing it because In the chitlin circuit Okay, okay. <laughs> But my music worldwide I just don't promote that much Let, Let's be clear I don't I don't be doing that much media and shit like that because I be low key with the shit I be doing. Mm -hmm. But when I feel like popping out, I could pop out. Like I just put out a new album. It charted. It'll go top 10 on Apple. Whenever I drop, it's going to chart. I dropped three mixtapes this year and they all went top 10 on Apple. You know what I'm saying? Or top 20. You know what I'm saying? Everybody been selling their catalogs. Breakdown, you know, you, you say you got, uh, I don't know if it was an official offer or just like loose conversation, but it's like, you as an artist who has been independent, right? That you own your stuff, right? You own your masters, right? Yeah. What's the thought process behind like even hearing about an offer like that? Well, they if an artist probably own 15, 16% and they getting millions for their catalog, they probably would like, shit, fuck that shit. Then if you're not making meaningful music, why not sell it? You know what I'm saying? Mm. But me, my music, over time, um, like I got Boss Up and High Field just went gold. Paranoia just went gold. Courtesy about to go gold. 24 is three times platinum. Epidemic, the album is gold. All these are going to end up being platinum over time. So I want all that money to be coming to me. You know what I'm saying? Um, now, if I wanted to sell it for 40, 50 million real quick and cash out, I don't need it. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm good. Why do you think other artists have, Because we've seen a lot of artists Sell their catalog Or We don't know if it's just Just their uh, their, their rights to the masters Or that they're just selling their pub but, but we've seen all these big deals That everybody's doing And to be honest You know I, I heard um, Well you know, Salute to Irv Gotti but, but he also He said this But a lot of other people said this They're like Yo listen Yo If I get 200 or 100 million dollars for my catalog, yeah, of course I care about my intellectual property, but I could use that hundred to go build a whole another business. Forty million dollars a lot of money, right? Yeah, um, that got to be an enticing offer. Yeah, but I could that same forty million. I don't need forty million to build a business. All I need is two hundred and fifty k to build a business. You get what I'm saying? I could build a business, and then I can leave that catalog to my kids. Mm. They can eat off that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm. Some of my shit is timeless, so I'm not really tripping. I'm just not tripping, you know what I'm saying? I don't got to sell it. Yeah, that's a good way to think about it. I, I've I've seen Russ kind of talk about why he doesn't want to sell his catalog. And pretty much he kind of, maybe you guys are in, in similar boats where he's like, listen, I own majority of my shit or all of my shit, and why would I sell something that if they offered me X dollars, they're clearly probably going to make 5X dollars, right? Yeah. So, and yeah, don't, don't get me wrong. If I'm down, down and down bad. Yeah. yeah. Got to do what we got to do now. Mm. But I'm not down bad, so it ain't no reason. Yeah. It, you don't seem to be the person who's like, yo, let me just cash out in a bag. I think a lot of, some artists are doing it on a cash out type of thing. Like, yo, listen, they've never got that one singular big check. They're like, all right, fuck it. You know, yeah, like, for sure. F f f like, and Future has a great fucking catalog. Yeah, I Future catalog he, crazy. He sold his shit for it, but that nigga after he sold his shit, he been buying everything in the world. I'm telling, <laughs> like he been spending that money. Yeah, which, which again, he you know he's such a great artist, and and a, a music manager of an artist that was in conversation to sell their shit said this to me. They said, "Listen, this artist gonna drop five to six more new albums." In the next three years, that's going to be a new catalog that he owns. That he can do it again for. You could do it again for. Yep. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's like, yo, it's like you don't have to look at some of these things like they're kids. Like, yo, yep. you can't sell it. Be like, hey, all right, cool. If you think you can monetize it here, I'm going to take this money. I'm going to do some other shit with it. But also, it's not like I retired. I'm still making yep. music. And that's what you could sell that old catalog, take that new 
money, market your new catalog, make that ten times bigger. It's all kind of ways you can work that. That's why I say I respect the hustle. And like I if I shit, if I wanted a quick 30, 40 million, I sell my shit and go do something new. Um, you know, I'm notorious for pocket watching. I'm a pocket watching kid. I know. I love it. <laughs> Have you made more money in music or outside of music? Music. I, music make music really? make a lot of money for me. Because I put out a lot of music and my music streams for years. My old catalog still streams. Boss Up, Loyalty, How I Feel. They all stream. You no radio paid, play. You didn't pay off them joints too, right? Yeah, hell yeah. Uh, I'm only asking because most majority of rappers don't get paid off that music. Yeah, I get paid off my music. Mm. I, I, I got a high recruitment rate. Mm. And this is low, low up front cost. I'm going to stream organically. So they don't, when I drop a song, they don't got to spend a million dollars to market it. So when it comes to somebody like you who's going to recoup, who probably don't want the big ass um, advance, right? Which a lot of people want. Because yeah, sometimes I, only, I might not even take an advance for an album. Like, I don't want that advance. Put that in the promotions and then we'll make it on the back end. Well, so how conversations happen? Like, let's say it's time to re-up. Gazi or whatever. How, how do those conversations happen? Because, I, because because now he can't throw like yo yo here's five mil in terms of an advance to make you be like oh okay I'm signing back. You're you're probably caring about the other things like you know percentages this and third how the back end go look. How how do those conversations happen when you're not hungry for the advance money? He's you know what he don't even try me. He know I'm not hungry for it. So he just but he do good business. He'll be like shit. Well shit. Boom. We'll bust this down 50 50. You keep that. I keep this. You know what I'm saying? And we'll do this on the marketing side. Shit. Whatever you want, man. Whatever. Cause he trusts my my marketing um decisions and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like I actually pay attention to what's going on. Shit. I need that marketing like that and that marketing like that. True. I'm involved in the process. I think a lot of rappers don't do that because either they're trying to seem too cool or they're trying to. It see, it, it, it unfortunately feels like it's cool to be ignorant to the business of your career. I see. That's I get over on niggas like that. Mm. Oh, you dumb? <laughs> Why not? You can be finessed. You green. I've never understood why why rappers, which a lot of rappers say they used to be in the streets hustling. And I'm like, all right, well, if, if you're in the streets hustling, you want to be in tune with everything that's going on. It's got to be cow because when you come in, when you come in a spot and you you don't know how much a bag weigh. Oh, you don't. Mm. It's supposed to be four forty eight. Oh, if you don't know, I shit, I might give you four thirty two. I might chump you off all the way. I might give you three hundred ninety eight grams. It's supposed to be four forty eight. Damn, you sweet. Why not? This supposed to happen to you so you can learn. That you need to get out of this business mm. In the streets You get what I'm saying No no I, I get you Wow That's how I came in the game I came in the game where I didn't know So I got finessed real quick Boom Oh let me correct myself Damn I got finessed on this So the next time I go get one I need so to have you my own quickly. Clock. I, You know what I hate I hate when I see like Artists I respect And they're 10 years in their career And that's when they complain And they say man Yo, niggas took. Yo, I never made no money from this. Or yo, they took advantage of me, and I'm like, damn, this. It, it, it's sad because they're never as hot as they used to be. Yeah, and they're a little bit older, and it's like, damn. So you tell me, it took to this point for you to realize what niggas was going only on. complain when they not popping no more, or they ain't making money no more. Cause they, cause they was eating. You know, when you popping, you eating off them shows, all that shit. So you ain't tripping. Then when that money slow down, you realize like, okay, let me get it. Let me check my finances. Mm. But keeping your finances together is easy. Just make sure. That's why I say I make shit well, simple. I think it's easy for you. No, it could be because I make shit simple. I break shit down to be simple. How much we spending on that? How much we spending on that? You know what I'm saying? It's only a few things you can spend on these days. Well, well, well all right, I'll give a scenario. So uh, art, let's say an artist signs to a 16% royalty rate deal. That's where you fucked up okay. at it anyway. Well, 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 but well, you know, if you're from the hood and you're trying to get out, you got ops, you know, you could die tomorrow. You need to sign that quick deal to get yourself up out of there. You can't knock nobody. Now, now they gave that person two and a half million, okay? Now he got, is basically three albums with, with, two, with an option for two more. Yeah. So really it could be a five, op- uh, five album deal. Yeah. That person is thinking, damn, okay, all right, they got half of the, the two two mil up front. 
they're thinking, oh shit, money's coming quick. Yeah, yeah. They're thinking, all right, man. So after I turn in a couple of these, like I'm gonna be not realizing the the music or the money your music generates ain't gonna just be the two million. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Usually sometimes you gotta pay, like they'll have it in the contract. The the lawyer fees for both of y'all, your shit still gotta recoup, right? <laughs> which, yeah, for sure. You're not thinking about that. Then all the promotion your shit gotta recoup, which your know, artist told me one time was like, yo. I got charged fifty thousand for my label to pitch my music to, to Spotify for rap caviar. That shit sound crazy. And it was like they were confused. That's that's part of the that's part of the thing. So again, the majority of artists, you know, uh, if if you're in that situation, you're not even knowing what the path to recoupment is, because there's so many hidden things in there that again, yeah, you, you might just came from the hood, but like. You ain't really knowing that, number one, they're not going to be forthcoming with the accounting. Nah, You're going to really have to twist some arms to get the accounting. For sure. And then when you see the accounting, the accounting going to look wor way worse than you even think it is. You're going to wish you ain't see it. Yeah, then your manager might play you. You know what I'm saying? Everybody around really got them leeching off you and sucking you dry. You know what I'm saying? No, nah, no, of course. Uh, but, um, <laughs> but what you got to do is, I mean, shit, you, gotta, you either going to adapt or you ain't. Some people gonna doubt, some ain't. And like I said, especially when you, shit, when you can die tomorrow, you just gotta take that 16% deal. It is what it is. But that's why I put some game in my music. Like I show you how to goddamn use your credit to goddamn put some money up or get a quick 100 or 200. You know what I'm saying? But some niggas, shit, they just sign that deal because it's a lick real quick. Like, shit, let me get this shit, two and a half million, shit. That's a lot of, like when I was, when I was coming up in the hood, shit, that's a lot of money. Of course. I'm going to sign that motherfucker. I don't give a fuck what the percentage is. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? And truth be told, there's a lot of talented artists in the game now that when they first came in the game, they signed two, three bad deals. You know what it is, though? They don't be putting the young niggas on to what they signed. That's what I was going to uh, ask you about in terms of like mentorship because you kick a lot of game in the music. But like, you know, if a young artist hits you and be like, money man, yo, listen, man, yo, you see, I got this popping song that's moving on TikTok and, and, and on YouTube. I'm doing some label means. They starting to offer me some shit. Are, are you the person the type of... Yeah, they can, they can hit me up. I put them on. I put them on game. A lot of the, this hip-hop shit is because of... I'll bring it back. If you work in any corporate environment, they usually tell you this. This is what the bosses at HR is going to tell you. Hey, listen. Don't talk to your coworkers about your compensation. Right, because sometimes you'll be doing the same job as somebody else, and because of your negotiation leverage, your savviness, you'll be getting paid thirty percent more than them. Now, if you just want running around the office saying that that motherfucker is gonna come in here and be like, "Yo, he getting paid thirty percent. I work harder than that nigga. I do more." Yeah, but see, well, LeBron in hip hop, a lot of times. Niggas love bragging about their pockets, but they don't share information. Yeah, because they, they don't want to show. And then, you know, niggas got baby mamas. and Oh, true. That's you, know, <laughs> you know how shit go. <laughs> I just said niggas got baby mamas. You know, you can't just be putting all your <laughs> yeah, business you out there. Yeah, you're right. You're right. But, um, <laughs> but you got to think about it like this. Like, LeBron manages five of the other star athletes. Facts. He know what they getting paid. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know all the tactics, too. You get what I'm saying? So they go to LeBron like, shit, help me with this. You know, niggas got to stop being like that. Like, shit, you know a nigga know how to goddamn maneuver, but you'll get on other folks 80% of your money. Yeah. And get fucked over. But, you know, um, student, what my partner tell me? Teacher don't find a student. Student find a teacher. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Break that out. I mean, it's just shit. I know what's going on. So if you want to know what's going on, I'm not finna reach out when you could just easily hit a nigga phone and be like, shit, how do I maneuver through this? Or negotiate this for me. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? It's that easy. Like mm. me, I'm the type of nigga I reach out to somebody like, hey, these folks over here want to give me a million dollars, but what does this mean? And then I could break down what X, Y, Z mean. Or shit, shit, I help you. I don't help niggas get out their deal easy. No problem. I can refer you to some people. You know what I'm saying? Because I do solid business. You know what I'm saying? Like, I talk to people straight up. 
I don't I'm not finna See this is what a lot of niggas Be doing too They'll tell you one thing Then how they lawyer Hit your lawyer And it's a whole nother conversation Like why the fuck is we cool And our lawyers Talking about our business I, 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 I've <laughs> heard I've heard about that With feature clearances Where somebody be like Yeah yeah nah Of course Nah I got you Nah just, just hit the label Hit the lawyer Like everything gonna be cool Now they come back around It's like a whole different conversation That you had with your man It's like that period In the music business You'll be I, I, So if you a label And I'm, and I'm an artist I'm yeah. talking to you We Kicking some friendship, but our lawyers negotiating in the background. Hey, it, that's usually just called the yo. Say what the fuck you got to say to get that nigga the fuck out of your face. Be like, yeah, nah, I got you. Like, oh, that's what you. That's no problem, man. Yo, just have your yo, yo, have your lawyer. Just hit my lawyer up. We gonna work this shit out. Yeah, your see, that lawyer hit crazy. my lawyer up. My lawyer's like, yeah, from what he instructed us to do, this is what it gonna be. Be like, huh? That's lame, nigga. Shit. Cause think about it. We just sit here and we made the deal. Hey, I want fifty fifty. Yeah. Let's do 50 50. Nah, let's have our lawyers talking. What are we doing, man? Come on. What the fuck am I talking to you for then? We don't need to be talking. That just kind of happens to be the, the the nature of how all of this shit kind of goes down. I operate outside of the nature. You get what I'm saying? You clearly said the music business is the place that you make the majority of. You know everything you got going on. What would you change about the music industry? Because when you rapping about game, I feel like you, you know the life hacks. You the nigga with all the life hacks to shit. But because you have the life hacks, don't mean the shit is perfect. I mean, the world is predatory. So I would, the, the niggas got to change the music industry themselves, like, or they got to learn how to just maneuver. But that's just what it is. You know, folks take advantage of shit, man. Hey, did you really get? Uh, you're advancing Bitcoin? Yeah, I got a million dollar advance in Bitcoin. That's but fine. that was, the Bitcoin was, I ain't gonna count, Bitcoin was near the top. So I lost. You some, lost some money on that? Yeah, for sure. It's probably going back. So, so it was like 50 grand? That's how? It was about 60. Oh, it was near 60. the top. Yep. Right now it's 30, 35? You know, a new bull run coming. You think so? Guaranteed. It's and I've been holding, man. It went from 17. It dumped down to 17 with the FTX shit. It's back at 35. So you think we finna go back up? It, the bull run is every four years. Every but the halving is twenty twenty four. Halving they cut the supply in half. How do you know this shit? I, I shit. I'm. Do you it. read? Is, is it like I, I'm trying to figure out how you get your knowledge? Is it reading? Oh, I, is it is it watching videos? Is it observation? Is it trial and error? Is it experience? What is it? When I'm at the shooting range, I got the speakers loud. My truck. Door open, playing shit, all kind of shit. You get what I'm saying? So I'm listening. Halfway to what's going on Learning the lingo You know what I'm saying I know lingo and everything No matter what it is The streets, crypto, whatever And um, when I'm working out I'm doing cardio and shit I'm listening to this, that, there Music, this, that I'm listening to eight things at one time I'm recording two songs at one time I'm, I'm working out Listening to some crypto shit Then I'm running upstairs Putting a verse down Then taking that song away Going to another song You get what I'm saying You also said uh, On Twitter You said Every man should know how to Be able to box And shoot a gun Oh yeah If you don't know how to do that You sweet Why do you think that's important Because they make people walk like You get what I'm saying So if they You gotta, you gotta have respect out here Mm -hmm. You gotta be feared to a certain extent too Even though niggas don't give a fuck What you done did Who you done did something to But You you know what I'm talking about You know what I'm saying You gotta be able to use something Yeah If people think If if there's zero Thought that Like you know You could even offend yourself that, Yeah that, you're sweet problem. You know what I'm saying That's a problem Yeah I, 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 feel, I feel like when you t When you tweet You tweet and almost like it's like you tweet like a hood nigga Bible, man. Yeah, like, as I'm doing like, shit, I'm tweeting. Like I might go hit some weights and be like, man, if you can't lift your girl up, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you need to give up some bullshit. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Yo, when I when I get into your Instagram lives, I'm, I'm like, yo, you talking so much positivity and so much togetherness and so much progression. It's really inspiring. Yeah, because you you don't you don't want to be around a bunch of negative people. Well, but here's the thing: in hip hop, usually how people get the crowd is by saying, "I'm the baddest man around. 
I'm the biggest thug. I sell the most. Like, they usually try to, they don't usually do it on an upliftment type because, like, I listen to your shit, they get inspired. Well, you gotta be like that in hip hop because hip hop is a blood sport. So you gotta step on some shit because niggas always trying to get your spot. Yeah. Niggas really, see, they be like, oh, damn, well, why the fuck he roasting them or, or going at them? Really, niggas is hating on you because they feel like they should be where you at. Yeah. So you got to step on shit. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Yeah. But hip hop is full of hate. Nigga just dish you out of nowhere because he a hater. Damn, look at that nigga getting all them hoes. Damn, look at that nigga getting all that money. That should be me. So That's some boy hating that shit. You. He said he was the first nigga who rapped about crypto. Did y'all figure out that who? discrepancy? Soldier? Yeah, he said he was the first person who rapped about crypto. I ain't gonna lie, man. Soldier. That shit was crazy. Soldier. Yo, he pulled up a song I've never heard before in my life. I, that's what I'm saying. Soldier. That nigga, I, I, like, I don't know how, I think he sent it back in the time machine. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm like, yo, wait, wait, what? <laughs> but you know, Soldier will pull out some shit and he'll be the first nigga that done did it. I'm gonna be honest, though. yo, to be honest, I do think he's a very clever motherfucker. This is what I realize about people who have lasted in this game. You may look at them and think, yo, maybe because how they look, how they act, like that's that's a dumbass nigga. The dummies don't last in this fucking game. Nah, it's hell no. Nah. It's shrewd niggas. It's niggas who looking forward to the future. And even even with Soldier, like even that little, I think Soldier's one of those people who literally he always looked forward to the future. Yeah, soldier, soldier be on some shit, man. Like folks be laughing and all that type of shit, but soldier be on some shit, man. Nah, shit, I, I went up in that nigga crib. Once I seen that nigga had bottles of water with his face on, I'm like, this nigga's on some other shit. Man. Yeah, like, soldier this, always got some up his sleeve. For real, like, well, he, he knows about Brandon. Yo, he's like to me like the young Master P. Which yeah, by the way, yeah. I think that's a good thing to be like. Yeah, you you now have a brand. You're supposed to want to just market and push everything that you got and. Try to use this platform to sell shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. If you're not selling shit, what, what the fuck wrong with you? Because you're supposed to be making some money out of this, this shit, man. No, of course. The name of the game is to get that money. Uh, yo, yo, you, you, um, you cop all black Air Forces for the Atlanta Band. You, you, you cop everybody all black Air Forces? Yeah, because they said they had the Battle of the Bands next week. So I'm like, oh, man, I need to be stepping on shit, man. You can't go in there, guy. You know what I'm saying? What's the thing I, about? I, I bought a bunch of black. I be wearing black Air Force Ones. That's like a myth, though. Like black Air Forces don't really get you on a different type of time. I mean, you know, they are, if you wear them, you on the bullshit. You on the bullshit. All my young niggas who wear them on the bullshit. <laughs> you got white ones on today, so you on some good time of timing. Oh yeah, you know I'm in New York, man. I got to drip New Jersey. You know what I'm saying? I'm dripping through the city. You, you, it's no way you like New Jersey and, and New York. Only I don't like the gun laws. But I this is what they the locked city. up Wayne at. That's what I'm saying, boy. You'll come out this bitch and never go back home. This is one of the worst, man. Hey, as you're traveling through the United States, and by the way, I was, I was telling you I'm about to go to London for the first time. Which places do you like the most? I fought with everywhere because um, I got like a unique fan base, so everywhere they embrace me. Like, I don't have a hating ass fans. What's, what's your, describe your fan base because I, I really be looking at you. Play this. You're, you're next to, okay, and, and I hope you take this as a compliment. So, you're like the educational, cool niggas who gonna get it. Which is very different from, there's like a whole lane that I think they want to be kind of like you. I just call them scam rap. <laughs> Those are the scammer niggas. Those yeah. are those, like, they're just saying bullshit. Like, let's go rob the bank. Let's just do some fraud. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. they're instructing niggas to do fraud. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? You instructing niggas to get smart, use a brain, and take advantage of actual legal shit because that's how you come up in life. You know what I mean? You put niggas on currency. You put niggas on, on all type of different methods and type of stuff in terms of you know, kind of glowing up. I think I think that's dope. Yeah, I got so many lanes, man. Like, see, this is the thing. Like, I got Grow God, so that's the trappers. I got Red Eye, that's for the shooters. Legally, of course. Legally. Legally, um, I like that. <laughs> um, Grow God, too, for the legal. Um, Because you know drugs and guns don't mix. Hey, hey, they, they just legalize um, marijuana in Jersey. That's insane. They need to legalize it everywhere. But wait, um, wait, 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 it's been legal other places before. Well, I know California. Was yeah, Cal Denver, 
DC, I think it's illegal. I'm gonna be honest with you, yo, Jersey's such a weird place that they legalize marijuana. One time I'm driving around with this chick. She says, Yo, I want to go to the dispensary. I almost felt like she was undercover, baby yeah. type shit. Like, uh, yeah. She went into the shit and I was like, yo, she definitely having a meeting with the boys. I'm like, I, I think they just want to search my car. Yeah. So I'm already thinking, I'm like, cause in, in, in Jersey, um, unless you got you can see, you can't have if you have a gun in the vehicle, you have to be going from your house to the range. No deviations. That they shit sounds crazy. Some weird ass. If you stop for anything but gas, if you be like, oh, I stopped for a cup of coffee. It's three years. Actually, I used, more than three years. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. I used that's to ride around with three. Seeing the back back home, I used to ride around with three. A compact, just in case I'm going in the grocery store. <laughs> what? A rifle, <laughs> just in case I got to snipe some shit, and a regular size one, just so it holds it up. <laughs> you said you said if you go to the grocery <laughs> store, quick compact. You know what I'm saying? That Yo, way. Now down south is the way. I got to move down south, man. Hey, yeah. Explain the Texas thing and, and it's, yo, everybody's flocking to Houston. What's going on? What's, I don't know. It's like Atlanta to me, like, I, cause I'm from Atlanta with Decatur, but um, but I be in between both and on the West Coast. Everybody's telling me that there's like a Black Renaissance happening in Houston. Houston's just big as fuck, and then their houses is newer. They look luxury. I think that for the, good prices, the property price is good. Yeah, like up here, this shit sky high. You don't even want to know, man. You don't even want to know. Uh, so, I, I feel like the new Atlanta is Houston, in a sense. Yeah, I mean, folks from Houston be all in Atlanta, and folks from Atlanta be all in Houston. They club, they strip clubs going crazy. You know what I'm saying? It's like the black Wakandas. You, you feel me? And, they, yeah, they having some money, too. They having some paper. Mm. Uh, any collabs you got coming up that... that ooh. It's some collabs I want to do, but I don't... I dropped my shit so quick, like Crop Toba I just dropped, going up right now, and I wanted to put some collabs on there, but them, all right, so. Why I, you name it Crop Toba? Hold on, man. Because um, you know how that shit go. No, it's harvest season. No, I, I know, but but I I, I love I love just the 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 combining crop tober. I've never yeah. heard that before. Yeah, that's harvest season. If you out west with the flowers and shit, do you know what's going on? But I before that, I dropped Catch Me If You Can. I was gonna put uh, Bam and Kevo and. Punch made Dev on that motherfucker. Only yeah. because that's, you know what we talking about. Yeah, yeah. You get what I'm saying? I fuck with Batman Kevin. Yeah, that's my boy. Yo, Batman Kevin be telling me some information about some shit. I'm like, nigga, I'll be asking him the same thing. I said, how did and you You know, this? he was really doing his one too. Like, folks don't know that he was really doing his one too. So, hey, Kevo, the, the, the reason why I fuck with Kevo a lot, Kevo, like, everybody know the historic shit about him in Chicago, but Kevo is one of the niggas who's like, he's so savvy. Like, Kevo's the dude who knows how to just finesse fixing your credit. You get what yeah, I mean? Yeah, he's going finesse whatever, like, yeah. like he, He's learned how to, he's learned every legal life hack. For sure. Which, I think sometimes, you know, people like me, I'm kind of guilty of not taking advantage of the life hacks. Like, I'm the nigga who probably, like, pays too much in taxes. I mean, you get so much money, it's like. Nah, you don't want to, you don't ever want to do that, though. You're like, it's nah, like, you got to watch your money, yeah. Yeah, you always want to, because in reality, like, some of these motherfuckers, like, whether it's, like, Trump and them niggas, they not trying to pay nothing more than they, they need to pay. Man, they them, use every Them guy. niggas ain't paying shit. Yeah, they don't, you're right. I fuck, that, that nigga Trump, uh, he ain't paying shit. Yeah, he ain't paying <laughs> shit. Jeff Bezos ain't paying them shit. Them niggas ain't paying nothing. They just cooling, man. Yeah. Shit. Okay. All right. So, uh, who else? And by the way, you know, you described something to me which I feel like a lot of artists suffer from or like are affected by. The more you say, put out music too fast, and also when you deal with other artists, you got to deal with their situations. Like, yeah, clearances and all that. Like it's like it's niggas I want to work with, but I ain't. I don't have time. I don't have time to wait. Like my shit coming out fast. Like catch me if you can. I did that in two three days. It's got to come out Whoa. the next week. Two three days. I do all my albums in two three days, like I don't, I don't cause so it can be co so it can be cohesive. I want well, my I want that cohesive like, sound, yeah. And then songs I, you cut in a day. Shit, I do like five, and then I do four, then I do another seven, and it's a two, and then I take a month off. You know what I'm saying? Cause I gotta go live and get some more information. You know what I'm saying? Like I gotta go buy the newest firearm. I gotta go goddamn. That's fire. Go do some shit. I gotta go, and then I'm coming back and I'm rapping about it. You know what I'm saying? Whatever I just went through, I gotta go out west and fuck with some of the growers. You know what I'm saying? That's one of the things that uh, I think rappers are kind of missing too. Like you have to live. 
Yeah, you gotta live life, man. I have to live life. And then I'm I'm a, I'm a no type. It's no tomorrow type nigga. Like you gotta yeah. make that shit happen now and go crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like you gotta go crazy. What do you mean no tomorrow? Like it, tomorrow ain't promised. So you gotta go crazy today. And then uh, like niggas be taking this shit for a joke. I'm gonna go crazy on my shit. I'm gonna make sure I'm 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 going crazy on the verse. My song hard. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I'm trying to put that bitch out. Them niggas gonna feel that shit And we going crazy We finna market this shit I need this shit done now Like what are we doing What are we wasting time for Who's on the wish list For you to rap uh, Rap with And by the way uh, Before you answer that too In your hearts are hearts Well I think I'm gonna know the answer uh, If you answer truthfully Who, On 24 You think you killed baby Man I think it was two different Drips Because niggas ain't catch What I was talking about Some did though your flow is immaculate. Yeah, on that shit. yeah, Man, nigga, that shit was in the in the pocket. Yeah, that's that a shit. different flow. Folks don't know that's that's twenty twenty seven. But baby went crazy. Now he, you go crazy. Yeah, babies, babies, baby be going crazy, but. But I ain't gonna lie, man. This shit just different. You know what I'm saying? Hey, tw- twenty four, Kobe Bryant. W- what was it meaning for you? I, Kobe had just died when I was recording, and I and I was like, damn, that's fucked up. And um. And I was like I said, I was in Frisco, so I was around all the newest flavors, burning on Lily Court and some Louis Corduroys. I literally yeah, had some Louis I, Corduroys I on. That is still it's not to now. I was listening. I'm like, yeah. yo, I thought you were just flying this shit to Ryan. I'm like, this, nah, this is burning. So I'm so- saying burning on Lily Koi, which is a Lily Koi strain. That's the strain I had in Hawaii. Mm, okay. Lily Koi, that's a fruit. Um, burning on Lily Koi and some Louis Corduroys. RP Kobe Bryant. RP 24. I can make cool 50 can less 24 hours. Yo, Ryan with the pack through Tennessee mountains, going crazy on that. You, you, you were rapping, you were rapping like sometimes I hear Ross rap. rap Ross be saying certain shit. I don't know what the fuck you talk about. Yeah, and like, then I used he to be turn- using certain di- different words that niggas don't be using on the right. At least not around me. I'd be like, oh, this shit sounds great. Yeah, yeah all my it. shit is lingo though. Like I'm not trying to just outright say. Like some rappers just be outright saying some hot yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about like hot. Like I'm. Putting that shit in lingo so I don't get myself locked up. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah like fuck that. Yeah. They gonna, well, well, I mean, it's gonna sound better too. Way better, cause uh, you know it used to be shit like Future would say. Four years later, I'd be like, damn, I didn't even know he said that. Future's like just. I was just telling somebody even about Future. I said, man, yo, this nigga this year or in the last like I want to say like fifteen months, yo, if if this was his first year, we'd be like, he's a goat. Yo, he's never had that moment where you're like, yo, damn, this nigga don't got it no more. Oh, no, nah, that nigga go crazy. How is he that good? He, he, shit, he got it. He got the drip. That's why I say when you got that drip for music, that shit just gonna keep coming out. Like me, I don't I don't worry about music because I know it's, I know I got it. You know what I'm saying? Like, not on no bragging shit, but shit, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make sure niggas fuck with my shit. I ain't just making it for a hustle. I'm, I actually, I mean, yeah. I'm making money off of it, but I actually can make music. Which that gotta be the dopest thing of it all. Yeah, I dropped three three um tapes this year. I don't be tripping on forcing it on the nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, you on you and future on the next tape. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I just did one with Scooter, and then Scooter. I'm gonna get one with Future too. I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna uh, reach out over there to free bands, but um, but like I said, like man, a lot of shit I just be putting out so quick. Like Crop told me I did that in two three days. Some hit me, boom. Really? Yeah, so some like got into me. Like so, you already got all the beats like. Oh, you know it's so crazy. The producer sent me a twenty pack of ten of them beats. Five mixtape done. Like before I came out here, I heard twelve five beats. Next mixtape done already. When I get back, two three days it'll be done. Really? Yeah, be ready to go, and I be ready to put this shit out. Like we on to the next. While that old shit going crazy, bubbling, this new shit coming out. Cause you know my my folks want shit to listen to. If they like me, I'm working out every day. I need new shit to listen to. I need new music, new music, new music. Because music inspire. Yeah. And music subliminally train you to get some money. You know what I'm saying? Like, my shit, like, Crop Tober is like, you can work out to that shit. You're going to go lift some weights. You're going to go get some money. you active. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you know who I think you are going to end up being like? I see Chameleon there. Yeah, but see, Chameleon there was just... For a little period. No, well, 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 I mean, so not the music. I'm talking about apparently Chameleon is like huge in the tech market. That's what I heard. I heard a lot yeah. of money. Yeah, I heard like, he's getting a lot of money. It's one of those niggas who like, 
I think people looked at the music and never thought he was a smart nigga. And then he really started hitting all them plays. And then he, that's the reason why you ain't seen too much in the music. Because yeah, because he made so he much money over there. Yeah. I, I could see... I could see maybe in a couple of years you making millions from growing and shit like that from all these other things you're doing besides music, investing, you know what I mean, working certain currents. I, I, I could see that happening where, you know, hopefully, obviously, you're still giving music Well, you know what they say? Rap. They say if it's easy to you, you need to make money off of it. And music is so easy to me. Like, this shit is nothing, and I make good music. And I um, subliminally train through the music. You get what I'm saying? Like, mm. my, my folks who fuck with me, they, if I tell them, I mean, if I, I'm putting them on the newest shit, like them Blackout 300s and ARPs, the minis, five-inch barrels on them, they gonna go get that. You get what I'm saying? And I put it in the music. You get what I'm saying? Like a real gun enthusiast. Hey, you know what's funny? Like, I got a bunch of weapons, right? I was about to, um, I was about to, like show off my collection Then I see your shit I'm like Man your shit all custom And shit like that Oh Fuck. yeah I ain't gonna lie I don't I in, think I live in Jersey So I, like my shit got it My shit is like yo Yo I just bought some shit They say yo This is already damn near illegal In Jersey it's considered the other Yeah Because if, if You know It's basically illegal um, But it's a loop it's, a, it's, a, it's like a little loophole To make it legal here They say if you even Touch it you say you can't do nothing to it. You take anything off of it or put anything on it, it's going to be illegal in Jersey. Yeah. And it's like... See, mine got all the latest attachments, um, barrel is custom. I got some shit with a shark where, where it's a shark etched into where you pop the mag in. It's all kind of shit going on with mine. Like, mine is custom to the T. Some of them got two scopes on them. They got beam and flashlight combinations. I got I, the newest uh, shadow system glizzies. Everything. You get what I'm saying? And God, like the tech shit is cool, but I like active shit. You know what I'm saying? Like I like being active. Hey, you know I was thinking about making like uh maybe like a like a like a little weapons child child where I could shoot outdoors and shit like that. Yo, I, I, I bought a sniper rifle that could shoot. Like a mile away And I still ain't using it Yeah that's cause You can't use it up here You need to come down I think I gotta go to Pennsylvania uh, well, The closest place for me Is Pennsylvania Like you Gotta be outdoors And hopefully I can try To hit some shit Yeah well, A mile away nigga, I'm, I'm gonna be feeling like What's that nigga name Oh that uh, sniper nigga Who killed all them folks Well yeah Well, well that nigga and, and they made a movie About American Sniper But you know My favorite sniper movie Mark Wahlberg Oh yeah <laughs> My boy was killing That shit man That nigga was going crazy Yeah Damn. All right, cool. So uh, you work in this project for now. It looked like you you already cooking up mentally. You already cooked up another project, bro. Yeah, that shit. That shit done. When when we get that, or when you gonna do it? Because you ain't even do it yet. Uh, when I get back, I'm gonna do it. I got another project already ready too. I got I got Purple Heart already done. Um, and then I gotta um drop the uh, Catch Me If You Can. I gotta drop the um deluxe to that. But Crop Tober song go crazy. Like I shot. Two videos in one day yesterday. I just got too nah, much I shit to do. It. Yeah, nah, yeah. I, I, I seen the joint with you in the gym, like you know what I mean, and and, and the little models and everything like that going on. Hey, like I mean, doesn't it become like almost too much work? Nah, I like working. I like staying. That's why I say I got to be active, man. My mind race. I got to I got to work all day and go go to sleep when I'm exhausted. Shit, I gotta. I don't like just being laying around and sitting around. That's why when I'm back, I told you I go. To, I'm at the range four, five hours, and then I'm jogging or I'm doing something, lifting weights all day. This is what I do all day. Jeez. And then recording. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then if I gotta go to another city, I'm flying to another city. Boom, I'm moving around. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm. Handling business. Hey, three artists you haven't worked with yet. You want to work with? Man, I can't say it's so many because I don't just. I'm not just the type of nigga who gonna be like. Drake and whoever's huge, you know what I'm saying? Like, like I fuck make sense type shit. Yeah, like I fuck with whoever I, my music vibe with. It could be an artist that's not known. I like music that sound good. I actually make music that sound good. I don't want to just work with a nigga because he popping. You know mm. what I'm saying? Do I fuck with that shit? Yes, mm. but I want some shit like like some vibe. The music got a vibe together. Like I fuck with Glock shit. I fuck with um. Bag, I fought with Future, Drake, I fought with Shorty, Shorty. I just had Shorty up here. Yeah, That's I fought with his shit. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta get some in with him too. We were just talking. I wanna um, see y'all two on the track. On yeah, the yeah, for sure. I like his last shit that just came out. I fought with Rod Wave. I fought with everybody's shit. So 
That's why I say, and then, but at the same time, I'm not really pressed to do nothing with nobody because I make shit so quick, and I'm on a, I'm on different timing with my music too. Like I'm putting other shit that normal artists don't put in their music on my shit. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm, I ain't gonna lie, like my shit really up there with the, with the. So called legends right now. Yeah. No, shit. You know, it's just definitely moving. Yeah, with the shit I'm talking about, like, I just never marketed. I'm going to keep it real. I didn't give a fuck about marketing. I didn't give a fuck about going to the Breakfast Club, going on well, radio well, interviews. That's the next level of it, right? You know, you, you wanted to stick because, again, you'll have the music of the quality of like a 24, but if it gets overlooked or people don't catch on during that time when you're supposed to be marketing it. Like it, yeah, like your fans gonna love it because they listen to everything. But you yeah. want the masses to kind of take on for sure. Because where I came from, fucked me up mentally. It was like nigga, fuck an interview, nigga, fuck an interview. Yeah, yeah. a show, fuck a show. You get what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. That's, <laughs> I don't know why we was like that. It was like because look, we came up on the uh, WAP Gucci, yeah, yeah. and we came up. Them niggas was they ain't give a fuck. Gucci didn't give a fuck about an interview or a show. Gucci didn't give a fuck about a lot of things. You get what I'm saying? But that's what we came up on the OJ, the Juice. Yeah, yeah. Future, free band. You see, them niggas don't give a fuck. We, that's what we came up on. You know what I'm saying? That's my side of town. So we, we didn't give a fuck. But also, at the same time, we not signed to a major. So we got to put in the extra work, even that's though that. we major. But um, we got to still put in that extra work. But I work in the studio all day. But I didn't give a fuck about marketing. I'm going to keep it real. Shit, nigga, marketing was us. Nigga, we, we got... Nigga, we got strings. Come get this shit. That's what uh, a lot of people realize about Southern artists. Southern artists, they they do stuff different. Like, you see, uh, up north artists, they're going to put up music and they're running straight to the radio station because that's the only way they promote. Like, people from the south, they usually have different ways of how they really give it up uh, rather than just, like, be like, oh, no, I got to get on the breakfast club or an interview just to kind of talk about it. You know what I mean? Yeah, we usually rap to sell more. Exotic. <laughs> that's how. That's what we, we was doing. We would rap, put it in the music, and then we trying to sell more bags. Shit. I that's mean. what we was rapping for at first, and then it's just crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, shit, twelve busted out spot. They finding our albums and our albums is me, money, and Irene. That's the name because Irene was the, the gas at the time. So we was really doing shit like that, but. The marketing now I take it seriously Because I make so much money from it It's like we got to market this shit man. Of course this shit going crazy. Yeah, let me tell you, <laughs> you always got to market a Great product Because again Sometimes you hope Great product finds everybody But sometimes You, you also got to Help it a little now, bit Now it's a science to this shit Because my shit Everywhere Like it's everywhere It's just um You know you got to put that work in man you, This shit work man you, How you going to work If you don't You're not going to eat If you don't work No that's a fact Alright Um Okay, so new music coming soon. Croptober going crazy. Uh, tours? Oh, yeah, I got a tour next year. I was supposed to tour this year, but I was, you know, so crazy. I be recording so much, I don't have time to go on tour. So um, I got a bag waiting for me to go on tour. UK, I mean, a, a European tour. Really? And a tour here. Yeah, it's already set up. Um, a tour here. In January or February, and then a European tour mm. right after. It's just I was supposed to do that this year. Shit, around August, September, I just didn't have time to do it because I was making more music. Damn, I keep I I keep music out three, four mixtapes or albums a year. Man, you trapping out that booth, man. Holy yeah, shit. I'm 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 going crazy because I got shit in my head. I got to get out or shit I done lived that got to get out before I before this shit go to waste. You know what I'm saying? Now, of course. All right, man. Yo, listen. Uh, if you guys haven't checked that crop to crop tober out, uh, it's available on Spotify everywhere. Not just Spin Rilla. Is Spin Rilla still around, bro? Nah, I don't think they still around. Cause I looked the other day, that shit wasn't around. But nah, that shit everywhere. I, that was when I was first coming out. Spin Rilla nah, was. Nah. Yeah, no. Nah, but but uh, y'all can go check out. You know, my man, Money Man. Uh, he got hella projects out. But go check out his last project. Crop tober is out on Spotify. Uh, I was about to say Spotify where we're at now. We used to, have, we used to be exclusive to Spotify. We're, all we're the everywhere DSPs. now. <laughs> we're everywhere. <laughs> but, but it's on Apple. Uh, I'm pretty sure you catch it on Amazon Music. You can catch it on Google Play. Everywhere where you could go stream music. Make sure you run it up. Hey, I do. I usually ask this question for sometimes people might not know your catalog um, intimately. If you could pick three songs that if somebody listened to in your catalog, it could be any songs, they would get a the the best example of who you are as an artist and a person, what three songs would it be? 
I ain't gonna lie It would be I, I'm gonna say this Cause I always A fan of my You know I make new shit And don't listen to my old shit Really So yeah because um, I keep moving forward New flow New whatever You know what I'm saying Whatever inspired me at the time It would be Croptober right now That, that shit just going so crazy to me It, it motivate me to To turn up You know what I'm saying Y'all yeah, niggas go listen to some goddamn Croptober man That's basically uh, uh, What my man's saying in a nutshell Yo <laughs> Hey listen Yo I, w- I would love to have you up um, Before you drop your next project I've been trying to set this up for a minute man Yeah it's been a minute for sure I, I, I feel like You know me I'm someone who I love Having conversation about the business of music And just Really some of the shit that people don't think is as you know, popular to talk about, but this is how you really get the money if you really want it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you, guys, for sure. you can't be talking about the money, but you don't really want to talk about the ways of how to get the money and really uh, what's really behind the. Remember, it's the business of music. I always watch your shit when you talk talking about the music business because you talk about it at least <laughs> twice a month. <laughs> no, of course. Yeah. Of course. Like, the, first of all, I make sure I'm highly educated about it. I talk to executives, I talk to people who are in the buildings people with actual reach of these situations and make sure, you know, uh, you know, as a fan, when I was coming up, I used to look at shit. I'm like, yeah, of course I love the music, but I want to know what's behind that shit. Yeah. Now when I'm, and I'm in this position, I try to also, you know, tell people, I'm like, yo, listen, I know some of y'all niggas can't rap worth a lick, but yo, you could be the manager. Let me break down the business for you. Let me tell you how shit is going. Yeah, you know, yeah. I think that's important too. Everybody so. want to be the star though, even the manager half the time. <laughs> <laughs> There's a few. There's a few. Anyway, man. All right, listen, man. Uh, it's been a great episode. Uh, thank you for watching another episode of Off the Record with me and Money Man. Please go check out this project, Croptober, now available on all DSP platforms. Shit, you probably. Uh, People don't even sell, send out CDs no more, right? Remember when FYE was popping and shit? Oh, that shit crazy, yeah. I ain't I ain't seen that in a minute. Yeah, you, you gotta <laughs> get on Apple, Google Play, Amazon Music, and of course Spotify. I appreciate you guys. Any, any last words for the people? Oh, nah, man. Y'all go check that motherfucker out, man. Croptober. Come on, man. It's more academics. We're out. All right, cool.